So I wanted to make a proper breakdown video of the new Mac lineup that was released with the M1 chip. I might name this series like Think Tech or something where I just sit down and brain dump my thoughts on tech. So right now I'm actually just re-watching the event over and over again just to see if I'm missing anything. But I've already made videos on Apple Silicon and Big Sur and I might make an update for M1, but this video's primary focus is on the MacBook Air, Pro, and the Mini. Starting off with Laura, who talked about the MacBook Air. In terms of the exterior, not much has changed over the last generation. Um, the overall design has been kept the same for all the products. And I will give my speculation on this topic at the end for my reasoning behind this. But if it's not broke, don't fix it, except for your butterfly switches. Anyway, um, compared to the MacBook Air that was released earlier this year, um, the display now has P3 wide gamut, something that was always reserved for the MacBook Pro. So colors will be represented more accurately. So this is generally good for everyone. Although I've noticed that the brightness has remained the same at 400 nits. Um, the battery life also is being claimed to have 18 hours, which is insane, but it probably won't last that long for most people. Um, more than likely, the 15 hours of web browsing that they're claiming is probably going to be more accurate, which is still impressive since the battery size physically is still the same. Um, they're also claiming that it's three and a half times faster in CPU performance and five and a half times faster in the graphical department compared to their Intel counterparts. Now, is this performance across the board? More than likely not. I would say this is primarily just for their first party apps and apps that are built for the M1 chip. Um, the camera has been updated through software, but only time will tell if it looks like we're still talking through like a gas station surveillance camera. So the two things that stand out to me for the Air specifically is that it's the only laptop out of the three products with no fan. It's also the only laptop out of the three products with one less GPU core option. Now, how does this affect performance? Who knows, we really just have to wait until we get the laptops in hand. But more than likely, I'm just going to assume that the Air is probably still going to be a better choice for a vast majority of people. Also comes with two USB 4 ports with Thunderbolt capabilities. Prices have remained the same, which I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm glad it's not more expensive than their Intel counterparts. A cut of $100 would have been nice, but I mean, it's Apple, it is what it is. So there's still discounts in the educational store, which is always nice to see. And that fan though, that's the only concern that I have. I'm worried about sustained performance over a long period of time, but if you're doing work professionally, that probably means you want to move over to the MacBook Pro. So segueing into the Pro, let's talk about Shruti, cause she was the next one that talked about the MacBook Pro. So once again, the design has pretty much remain identical, mainly the internals have been changed. So this laptop is replacing the eighth gen Intel chips. And I know there are people talking about the four port Thunderbolt model that's still being sold with the Intel chips, but the M1 MacBook Pro looks to be replacing the entry level MacBook Pro with only two ports. Um, so this one also comes with USB 4, two of them with Thunderbolt capability. The Pro is also um, claiming to have two and a half it's not two and a half, it's 2.8 times faster in the CPU performance. And again, five times faster in the graphical department. The most impressive thing was editing an 8K in DaVinci Resolve with no frame drops. That was actually really impressive. That no other compact three pound pro notebook can do. Show me. Playback 8K ProRes footage in full quality in DaVinci Resolve without dropping a single frame. In DaVinci? Machine learning performance is spectacular. That's impressive. Thanks to the neural but I would say the biggest change that has always made the Air a great option is that the Pro for once has battery battery, better battery, <laughs> better battery life, which claims of 20 hours of video playback, which is double of their Intel counterparts. Although I don't think a lot of people are just going to be sitting around on their MacBook Pro watching content for 20 hours, their web browsing claims, it seems more believable with 17 hours. But like I said before in the MacBook Air, the physical battery size is the same. So the fact that they're getting that much more usage out of your laptop and you're still getting more or less the same performance, hopefully, it just shows the efficiency of the M1 chip. So some of the smaller details are that there are now three studio quality microphones similar to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, the better camera, once again, 
Uh, it also caps out at 16 gigabytes instead of being able to go up to 32 like the Intel counterparts. Um, there's also now Wi-Fi 6. Now all of this sounds great, but what makes this different than the MacBook Air? Because in terms of price and the specs that you see online, they're very similar. And to answer this question, it's really just the fan. Um, overall, I believe the Pro is just going to be able to sustain more intensive workloads longer since that's what the market of the Pro is for. If you're buying a laptop for professional use, meaning your machine is what makes you your money, I would say the Pro is probably gonna be the better option nine times out of 10. And finally, we have the Mac Mini, which was introduced by Julie. Now, before I talk about the Mac Mini, I just wanna go out and say that I honestly feel like this product doesn't get a lot of time in the limelight. This is the cheapest way to get a Mac. And if you have a monitor, keyboard, mouse, nothing has to be fancy or expensive. You don't need their $6,000 XDR display. The Mac mini is a fantastic option. Anyway, now that I'm off my uh, soapbox, the exterior wise, not much has changed other than the color and the ports. They're claiming up to three times faster CPU performance and then six times faster in the graphical department compared to the last generation Mac mini. The thing is the Mac mini is also paired with a fan with the M1 chip and it ha probably has the best cooling design out of all three laptops, <laughs> obviously better than the Air. So once again, just expect better performance for sustained workloads, better than the Pro more than likely. Um, RAM once again is capped out at 16 and doesn't look like we'll be able to upgrade the RAM ourselves. So with all that, what do you guys think? Is it worth the upgrade? Is it worth the switch? Uh, let me tell you what I think. I think that this is the first generation as if Apple is testing the waters, if this adoption is believable and feasible to not only their consumers, but to the chip industry as well. Like if you had both the Intel MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Pro, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference unless you knew what you were looking for. These next two years, in my opinion, is a software shift to maximize capability before doing a major redesign. I think the next generation is where we will see the true revolutionary change of potentially the M2 chip, but November 10th, 2020 was still revolutionary in itself for Apple taking that first step. But you have to remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. And out of all the products, I do believe the Mac mini stole the show at that price point. If you're getting, if the chips are pretty much the same across the board, but you're just getting the best cooling solution at the most affordable price, the Mac mini is kind of hard to beat. So let me know what you guys end up getting or if you're still stuck trying to decide. Um, if you enjoyed this Think Tech, let me know if it was easy to digest. Appreciate each sub, like, and follow on my social media. And as always guys, much love.